So um, today, um, I want to formally welcome you to Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. Um, we have Richard Keating and Eckerd Wirtz, and they are part of the company called Brillin Eyes. And I, I don't have any ownership in the company, although our last name uh, is similar. That's weird. Brillin means glasses in German. That is correct. So we're, we're maybe related in some long lost place. So, uh, well, um, well, Eckert is an optometrist as well as an optician. He's the CEO of Brillin Eyes. And then we also have another debonair gentleman here. He, uh, he's hair challenged, but that's <laughs> just, that means he's more evolved. Richard Keating, and he's, he's president. So we got the president and CEO of Brillin Eyes. And if you haven't heard of them, may have heard of some of the brands like Dutz, D-U-T-Z. So gentlemen, why don't we, um, let's let you introduce yourselves and I guess probably um, who's got more standing there. Eckert, why don't you introduce yourself for a few got minutes more and see um, what, uh, what you've been doing and how you got into optical and what your history is here. And then yes. we Richard doing the same. I'd love to. Thank you for the intro, um, uh, Dr. Pearl. Yes, so my name is Eckhart Wurtz. I think some of you know me. Um, I've met some of you. Some of our customers are actually on this call that I'm seeing here, um, private label customers and also uh, regular customers. Thank you for joining everyone. And thank you to the Burl family to invite us uh, to be part of this um, really fun adventure and give us the uh, portal to talk about private label. Um, my name is Eckhart Wurtz. I'm originally from Germany. I uh, went to optician school, opticianary school in Germany, and then finished with optometry school in Germany in Huntenspittel, Germany. After that, uh, worked for multiple larger eyewear companies, went into uh, work for Carrera Optics before it was uh, Cephilo, and uh, was responsible for multiple brands and territories for business development, sales development, and corporate training for Carrera Optics and um, went on from there to Eschenbach Optics, which in the US Eschenbach is mostly known as low vision, um, but Eschenbach in, in Europe is mostly known for both Esch uh, uh, low vision and also eyewear. I came here for Eschenbach to establish the eyewear um, division for Eschenbach in 2002 from Germany and uh, did that until 2010. And uh, after 2010, started Brillanize together with Richard Keating, who's on this call as well. And um, as a traditional distribution company, and over the last eight years, seven years, um, we went into private label first in Europe, and then uh, more so here in the United States. And so meanwhile, we've developed the European market and also the US market for private label. Um, private label for and mainly with focus on the um, medium price range, um, right below the, the um, that was the original start, right below boutique pricing. Meanwhile, we supply um, pretty much every price level depending on the customer's need. And we also uh, produce for and design for other eyewear companies here in the United States. And our customer base ranges for private labels, Two offices to our largest customer with 980 offices, um, which is in terms of really no scope of the business. And we try to continue to learn. Um, just because that for two years doesn't mean that we can learn. And um, I, for myself, always want to learn. So that's pretty much my background. All right, Richard, uh, your turn. Let's see if you can beat that. Well, I don't think I can beat that. I don't have quite the interesting story there, but. Uh... I started in the eyewear industry about 30 years ago. Uh, my first job was in lab services um, and quickly left that into the frame market. I have worked for uh, a number of companies over the years, um, and uh, including uh, my first stint with a company that's no longer around called Lawrence Eyewear, um, but uh, it enabled me to leave there with one of the, um, the owners of the company and start our own company um, where I ended up uh, uh, in charge of uh, all facets of it, including hiring and training the sales force, including product development. Um, and that led me into other companies where I ended up meeting Eckerd and uh, 
I think, um, you know, it's been a, um, a great partnership that we created with both of our knowledge base. Um, and uh, I think he kind of explained to you a little bit about um, who we are as Brill and I is as a company. So um, well, hard for you to keep a job then, Richard, huh? Yeah, well, I'm in charge of the sales force. So I'm in higher charge of hiring and training of all of our sales team and, um, and working with our customers. And obviously a private label has become a big part of, uh, of that and our company. So and how that works, uh, anyone that would hire you, I would never work for or what? <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Come on, Dr. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for the in introduction. I, I thought we'd just talk a little bit before we get into the meat here. You know, why are we even talking about this topic here about private label frames? You know, this is something I've been in practice 42 years. Uh, I've thought of this all the time. Why don't we just get together and really, um, try to create our own product and, and not that, and, and it's, sometimes it's helpful to be naive because you don't realize how many steps there are and how many hurdles there are. But I thought, well, can we just get like five guys or get together and we'll order a bunch of frames and we'll, you know, source them somewhere in China or Korea or somewhere and, you know, and, and make a lot of money. But there were so many barriers each time, uh, aside from the fact that I had no idea what I was doing that we thought, uh, you know, just end up not doing it. And then once in a while, there's a deal, you know, someone's got a bunch of discontinues that you can use for, um, for lower end product, but generally that doesn't work because you get what you pay for on that. So, so I would think right now that we're in this midst of this COVID, you know, we have to think about being more profitable than ever. So is that okay? Uh, gentlemen, is that okay to be profitable? Cause I don't want to do anything wrong. Uh, I would say for sure um, that for us is is really the the main focus for us and the reason why we got into private label is because we we see especially in the the regular single OD offices or multi location um, offices with ODs opt opticians depending on uh, what they're um, who they are and where they are um, the biggest challenge has been over the last few years the quality of uh, higher of branded um, product has not always promised and kept up what it promised. And uh, one of the things that we've had to, um, to decide at one point was we needed a second leg to stand on as a company. Um, traditional distribution is still uh, part of our core model. Um, but for us, it was very important to really find out the product that we're purchasing. Is it really what we ask the the factories depending on where they are whether they're in italy in germany um whether they're in korea in china in vietnam depending on the um give us that we ordered and so we put a put in place a system where we really dissect the finished product production samples to really know that the product that we actually source is also the product that we're getting okay so i'll take that as a yes that is a definite yes. be profitable well um, you know, so I've been thinking about this is what ways can we really be more profitable? Perhaps we can have all our vision plans, double our uh, reimbursement Would that that would work. Wouldn't it Perry? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure all the managed care would gladly send us more checks right away. Well, so. in fact, I was thinking our, our major top four would just go ahead and say, you know, we realize that you're all hurting at this time that you can't get even the managed care patients in. Here, we're going to match the PPP, well, I mean, they can't match the PPP money, but maybe they can match the EIDL money and say, you've, you've been loyal providers, we've been underpaying you, we haven't given you a raise in 20 years, uh, how about 10 grand just to kind of get you by, but I, I've just been hearing crickets from all those vision care plans, and I'm not going to isolate any one of them, but I haven't heard any one of them say, let's help out our ECPs. Who, who make us profitable because they take big discounts. Yeah, in fact, you know, all the, the VCP companies who have online opticals, they're advertising and they're making good money right now. So and I think a lot of them, their stores are still open, aren't they? If they're not in a mall, they're open. Potentially, they yeah. And uh, so, you know, um, that hasn't helped us at all, I think, when we have people that are selling to our patients uh, before they come into the office, after they come in the office, they're relentless about taking our, our patients. So I don't think we're going to make more money on that. Uh, we did have a, a, another podcast earlier in the week 
And Perry, uh, we, how did we tell people to make more money then? What did we ask them to do? Uh, early in the week, we talked about in-office edging. It's where you take a lens and you can stock it right in your office and have complete contr control of the supply chain. So that's a similar concept we're gonna be discussing here of controlling your destiny. So people don't have to tell you what to buy and where to buy it. Um, you exactly know, you what we wanna do is tr without compromise of quality, we want to decrease the cost of goods. And uh, so I, I think we really only have one, one good ethical way to do that. And, and that is to somehow reduce the cost of uh, frames. So we want to increase that margin. And I think right now, a lot of optometrists, when this comes up, we teased it yesterday. We, we have people say, well, wait a second, that's unethical. You know, if you, and, and go through the scenario, let's say if I have a frame that the friendly frame rep comes in, they bring donuts, they charm the staff, maybe they bring candy too. Um, so they come in and uh, you, got, you want to return some frames, so you're eager to have them come in. And then they have a one for three or a one for two. So you're going to return 10 frames uh, and you're going to buy 30. Now you got 20 other frames. And you never know if they're pushing out the dogs from the from the factory or if they're selling your best sellers, you'll, you'll find out later on. But, um, well, so, great. so we have to somehow make profit on this and there's different ways to make profit. So we generally buy things wholesale and sell them retail. And that difference is, is the margin there. So, um, the, in fact, the original way of a markup was what we call keystone. That meant you doubled it. And the reason for that is, if something went wrong, you'd have some you'd have some margin there to so you won't lose money. Well, fantastic. So obviously we need to make money, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into the meat of this, and we're gonna start with a poll. So let's uh, let's get going on that here. All right. So everybody should see a poll right now. All 153 of you. We appreciate you being here. Uh, we're gonna be talking for about another hour here. So. Um, hang tight. We will tell you exactly how to buy these frames. Uh, this is not a joke. So the first question is, what is your job title? Uh, I think it's just important us to know um, who is here. We welcome our competitors, our colleagues, friends, foes, frenemies, whoever. And, and while they're voting on that, I, I wanted to say that um, I do have an MBA. It took me two years to achieve um, on weekends. And in that MBA, I learned that we, we can have different pricing models. And I thought, well, wait a second. The main pricing model is you buy a frame and you either mark it up two and a half or three times. So if we pay $100, that frame will sell for 300. But um, I'm surprised if I ask some colleagues and say, well, what if you, know, you were a really good doctor and they said, you know, I like you so much. I'm gonna sell you some frames that we normally sell for $100. They're not discontinued, they're just fine. I'm gonna sell it for $10. How much would you sell it for? And you know, they immediately respond says, "Well, it's ten dollars. I'd sell it for thirty dollars." But wait, that's a three hundred dollar value. It's a three hundred dollar value. So why would you sell it for thirty? Because that's the only well, really, answers because that's the only pricing model they have. There's a there's a commercial on TV for um, Cardia Mobile. It's a little thing you stick your fingers on. It's an attachment to your phone. And it uh, gives your, tells if you have AFib. And the, and the person that's running that commercial says to, how much do we think this would cost? And everybody in there invariably says, oh, $800, $1,000. And then he says, it's only $99. And then they have a thing that overrides that says it's 89. So, so, so really matters what's the value to the patient. And that's the best way to price things. So. All right, so let me, let me go through the polling okay, results here, Dr. Brill. Um, so looks like the majority of, of listeners here, 38% uh, of them are doctor in, and they are also the owner. Um, and then the next one, um, I'll go ahead and share the results here. All right, everybody should be able to see the results. Uh, Richard, can you see them? I can, yes, I can. for sure. Great. So... Um, you know, the whole purpose of this conversation is we, we Dr. Brill and I are very anti-brands um, with licenses on them because um, we're going to get into the discussion of why that product is overpriced. You're being shopped online. 
someone can just come in, they take their smartphone, and um, they can easily Google it. And all of a sudden, you got showroomed. And as we get back to the practice, we have to figure out how to make profit. I see a lot of doctors are saying, oh, I'm going to see one hour, one patient an hour. Well, you're not going to make profit on one patient an hour. So the money has to come from somewhere. And it's not going to be from um, selling big branded product here. So um, Dr. Brill, let's go ahead and get into the, the intro. So um, I want to thank our sponsor. It's, our, it's ourself. So we're the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. Uh, we're not doom and gloom. We, we believe there's opportunity out there. And for everybody that's on this live webinar slash podcast, you're doing the right thing. You're, you're, you're seeking out independent media. Um, Dr. Brill, thank you for, for uh, funding this whole entrepreneur mo uh, broadcast. It's been my pleasure for over a year. We've got, what, close to 100 now, don't we? Audio podcasts, Facebook Lives, uh, Zoom videos. And uh, so it's been a lot. And we have a, a bunch of what? Regular YouTube videos on some of it. We acted like it was a, a skit. And uh, so we've had a lot of fun with it. Right. Can you see the screen here? What screen? Can you see the screen I'm sharing? No, no you're not sharing anything. OK, let me go back here. All right, we can see it. Just scroll back. Um, and this podcast is also sponsored by myself uh, with iRocket.com Consulting Business. Uh, it's a techie <clears throat> consulting firm um, from me, a millennial who loves technology and, and loves the business of optometry and optical. So um, I have learned the tools actually from my dad. So thank you for teaching me everything over the past eight years. Uh, it's gone quick. I love working with you. And um, the same things... I, I've done in his practice to keep it operationally lean. We're all about lean theory. We're lean theory in frames here pretty soon. Um, so we're going to be talking about group purchasing in this uh, live webinar, why we should all come <clears throat> together to purchase. Um, we're going to be telling you exactly how all of us, perhaps 20, 30, 50 of us practices and obstacles can all get together. And these gentlemen here are going to help us buy a ton of frames, thousands of them for at really reasonable prices and high quality. I know it, it might sound too good to be true, but we're going to go through all the myths of manufacturing. So right now, if, if you want to get on the list um, ahead of time, I want you to text keyword create to this phone number. If you have any interest in getting frames manufactured for you in a group setting where we can all save. So go ahead and text this phone number. We got a bunch of people already coming in. <clears throat> While we're waiting on this, um, you know, Eckerd, tell us a little about, you know, what's happening in the frame manufacturing world. Uh, where, you know, where are most of the frames made? You know, is it, is it Italy 90%? Is it China? You know, what's going on? Um, are you asking particularly in the industry or the product that we supply? Uh, just in the industry, what's going on with frames? Why has the cost just gone skyrocket? Well, it depends on, on uh, what you're looking at. If you're looking um, typically at branded product, the, the, the biggest challenge for branded product are licensing fees, which have uh, doubled and tripled over the last few years. Um, for, for instance, if you have a fashion label brand, those, those uh, um, licensing uh, licenses are very expensive. You have to pay up front in order to to obtain the license and then there is a certain royalty that is um, to be paid for every frame sale made by the company that actually um, makes it and distributes it back to the licensing uh, owner or the license owner, whoever the brand may be. Um, and with the increase of license uh, cost and, and obtaining, uh, the biggest issue that has happened over the last few years with um, with uh, branding and brands is that the quality um, had to suffer on some at, at some end because most of the brands couldn't just keep increasing the pricing for the eyewear uh, they had to look in different directions uh, such as producing product more profitable less expensive um, in a way where 
they can still make a profit with a brand name on the side. And so our focus comes in, we focused and we did some studies abroad in, the U, in, in Europe, mainly in Germany and Holland um, and also in France. Um, seeing where's the eyewear industry going with trends, where's the eyewear uh, industry going with eyewear frames in particular uh, in, in Europe, but also here in the US. So the, the trends have started changing probably about, I would say, 10 years ago, as far as 10, 15 years ago. There were a few private label companies, also so-called chains out there that only sold private label um, for obvious reasons. And they have always done private label with like us, um, with our capability of um, having, a des having designers on staff, having product, product development people uh, in, our, in our group here that really take the customer by the hand from beginning to end. And so the development started roughly about 10 years ago. We started um, developing private label about eight years ago with our first uh, customer. And the reason why is this particular customer was from Germany with about 200 stores. Their problem was that they had overall in the eyewear business, uh, in the frame uh, uh, product, product that they received, they had the biggest issue was after sales service and uh, warranty issues. And so they came to us and said, okay, so we buy your normal product, some of your product from, um, uh, from you, but can you create something that you have in your bags for us exclusively for our market um, with our input and make it the same quality than your product, that your product is, uh, or even better depending on what they wanted, whether it was in boutique, they started with just medium price range. And um, meanwhile, we're, creating product for them in the low, low end, uh, and also in the very uh, high end, handmade in France and handmade in Italy. And that's really the trend that has been continuing that we've seen more and more, um, partially also with the start of, of e-commerce and uh, online sales and eyewear, the, um, the overall sales per piece per patient has gone down worldwide. Um, Interestingly enough, more so in Europe so far than it has here. It's still um, the the online is still climbing the online part of the of, of eyewear sales, um, but it is somewhat I would say 50% less fast than it is in Europe, uh, which is a good thing so far for here. But nevertheless, we noticed the need when the first customers started coming to us asking, "Can you give us options?" to bring to market where we have higher margins. Gotcha. Well, thanks for uh, the, the great summary there. So, you know, is there really a secret to getting frames at really good prices? Um, I imagine you know, that Costco or, or Warby Parker or other big retailers, you know, there's no secret. They just go to a frame manufacturer and say, look, we want to buy 100,000 frames. And that's how they negotiate uh, their prices really low. Is that, is that true or am I wrong? Are you directing this at me? Uh, yeah, Richard or Eckerd, you know. Rick, go ahead. Well, I would say that uh, um, it, it is definitely cheaper when you buy in larger quantities, but um, based on where you want to go, um, you know, and, and what you want. I've seen quite a few people questioning on here, is everything made in China? Um, and, uh, and obviously there is a lot of product made in China. And, and, and certainly not everything that's made in China is low end. Um, there is high end in China um, and there's high end in, in, you know, in other countries. So um, as far as the pricing goes, it, obviously the more you buy, the better the price, which is the reason for doing private label. Um, you're able to buy or you have to buy a larger quantity. Um, but this is one of the reasons I think period that you brought up the group. Um, as a group, you, you enable yourself a better chance of being able to uh, lower your costs and increase your margins, which is really what um, what we're looking to do. Again, as Dr. Brill said earlier about making money. Um, that's how you're going to make money by lowering your costs and increasing your margins. Well, I, when I was at Vision Expo, I thought there's all sorts of vendors here I've never heard of. And some of them wanted to cater to wholesale. But I, I thought, well, what's the minimum, they call it MLQ, minimum order quantity. And generally it's $600 per piece. I mean, six, uh, I'm saying it's 600 frames per style. That's what I meant. 600 frames per style. Well, that's a lot of frames. And let's say you have um, 
40 styles in three different colors. So you've got 120 different SKUs there and you have 600. It's just not doable, you know, for someone with a, a small amount of locations. If you got 600 locations, you can do it and you have clout there. But um, here we don't have to buy 600 of one style each. You know, we can spread that out among how many. So there's somebody, R. Frank's ad, well, why can't we just do this by ourselves? Yeah, you could go ahead and do it by yourself, but uh, good luck with that. And you need to order a lot of frames. So if you want to order the next 10 years of frames, I think you could do it. And we will be able to, to answer someone else's question. We, we would actually be able to uh, have input on styling. We can choose frames that are already made and, and uh, make them as our private label. We can use frames that we can start actually from scratch with the design and have a consensus on it. So we'll have total freedom on that. You're not going to be uh, like some people that say, oh, I bought, uh, I got a thousand frames cheap and you pick out the ones you want. That's not the way this is going to work. So right. harness the power of the group. Harness the right. power so of the group. I want to call out on the screen I'm sharing here. Um, our next webinar is on Tuesday next week. We're going to be talking about online optical. There's been probably 10 podcasts about online optical so, so far, our webinars. I'm going to say they're all, they were all gimmicks. Um, I'm going to be bringing to you the best online e-commerce optical uh, that just launched. Um, Dr. Brill, we've been in beta for like the past six months with this company um, since we are key opinion leaders and early adopters. Um, you get burned sometimes being an early adopter. Dr. Brill, you know about that. I've been burned many a time. So. You've also had good success adopting early too, right? Well, yeah, we have. And, and it's kind of fun to, to have something that works, but oftentimes the confusion is companies decide, uh, I, first they say I'm an equipment company and then, the next, then they later on decide they want to be an expendables company or uh, you know, they decide they first sell you the razor and give you the blades, but later on they're like, give you the razor to sell you the blades. So sometimes they have a great idea, uh, but they're a bad company. Or as they say on, as they say on um, Shark Tank, you got a product, not a company. Right. So as far as online optical goes, we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to pair your private label line on your website. It won't be able to be shopped anywhere else because um, that skew, that model, that color will not be Googleable. <clears throat> yeah. And I hate that when we spend, when somebody spends two or three hours in the office and they're looking at high end products, something like Lindbergh or Cartier and they're, you know, so you did everything and then I got to go, I got to go. Uh, you don't see the person back, but next year you see them back for their exam and they think, well, where'd you get that Lindbergh? And this is the actual story. Uh, and this is a lady who had means. She says, I got it off a Russian website. I thought, I, I felt so abused, but you know, we hung in where we didn't, and she subsequently bought many things from us, but you think, I can't believe somebody would do that. And they'll, they'll take pictures of it. Now everybody takes pictures of everything. So they won't be able to do this with the styles that we curate. Right. So um, basically, it's the Warby Parker model that we're going to be sharing. Uh, we're going to give you the tools, the shipping, uh, the e-commerce store, make everything easy to upload, the marketing, the emails, integrate with your EHR. Uh, join us there. It's a low fee. Um, we can't touch frames. Everyone's talking about sanitizing frames. So why not just ship them to the house? Um, so we're going to talk about next week. Next week on Tuesday. Be there. Well, let's get on with today. So, Perry, we got a lot of stuff to cover. So, um, so let's get back to making a profit. I, I like giving things away to either indigent folks or, you know, the organizations of my choice. And the only way to do that is to be able to make a profit, not to be greedy, but just to be able to make a profit. If you don't make money on anything, it's hard to give it away. <laughs> that is very true. And right. I think that's where that's where private label is 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 really the anchor and the starting point um especially if you don't mind if i if i chime in here especially mm -hmm. in these times pair you mentioned it earlier um we there's a few customer of ours that are already on the call here um and from from as small as four offices um up to 15 up to 14 15 offices and up to and i think they can they can sing a song about the the profitability of this product and the way that it has changed their income and their profit margins and that's really 
the main reason why we do this. One of the things that, that both Rick and I really push for and strive for is we, we want to partner with people um, in, this, in this case, clients and customers, but also suppliers, um, manufacturers uh, and, and vendors that give us raw materials that we can depend on and that bring us to the next level. And this is really the purpose also of this call to help you get to the next level where you would want to be, whether this will be with us or this will be with someone else. Hopefully it will be with us. Um, private label is something that I think you will see more and more coming, coming your way. Um, we have the experience of almost uh, eight years now in the US and in, uh, in Europe and um, with private label and we can really offer you anything that you are looking for, whether it's in a business whether it is $300 above that um, in the higher end and boutique uh, level of that as we have sources in um, in Oyonnax in France, in, uh, in, in Italy, and in Italy, and we guarantee you that the product that we give you is actually made, A, with the materials we claim that they're made with, because we do source our raw materials, and B, that they are actually made in the country that we tell you that they're made with, in. Um, and for really one simple reason. A, we have a reputation to lose and B, we have a license to lose. And um, I'm in the business of losing a license or any um, FDA uh, approval that we have as an importer of, of eyewear over a customer or over someone that would prefer to have something misprinted, which happens, I'm, sh I'm sure, um, in this industry quite a bit. Hey, Edgar, we don't do that. Yes. You're, you're cutting out just a little uh, throughout Maybe go to Richard for a moment. And, hey, Richard, uh, this, tell us how this is better. Uh, tell us how this is better. Can you hey, hear me? Be, hey, before we get in, uh, I want to make sure we're here to answer everybody's questions. So go ahead, start asking questions. We're going to get about 10 of you live on video here. Um, I know you have pressing questions. How do I get started? Who's going to make them? Do I have to make them with my own two hands or, or what? So ask questions. Well, Kevin Count's on line here, and uh, he has a class. I'll shout out to him. Yeah. And he can teach you how to make a, uh, make a frame. And, uh, and I, want to, I really want to take it just for the experience of it. But he, I saw online where he said he doesn't mind marking up a frame 40, per, 40 times because he's got a handmade frame. He made it. And uh, I think Kevin, uh, I don't know, maybe we can get Kevin to shout out a little bit about, about being – okay with being making 40 times profit. Can you get him on for a sec? Yeah, let me get Kevin on here. Kevin uh, has a workshop in uh, sh Chicago area. Um, he invites, I think, four or five people and you'll make, and make it by hand. Um, this is for the person that just wants to know the craft, uh, but, but he likes the profit, so. It's gonna be hard to make 100 or 200 or 1,000 frames that way, so. Kevin on? on? All right. Maybe he doesn't want to be on. Oh. Let's see. There he is. There, Kevin, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. How are you doing, gentlemen? Very good. Doing well. Well, tell us about Kevin. Um, you know, why do you make your own frames? And tell us about the profit that you make by doing it yourself. So I, I'm curious. Um, yeah, your connection's bad, Kevin. Um, well, I, I make my own frames because that way I can I can create a, a one-off custom piece for, for my clients. Let me uh, make it better. I, I create custom one-off pieces for clients. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I can charge what I charge. Um, I don't, um, uh, you know, it's not for everybody, but there are the people who have taken the class so far are, uh, are creating frames as they're going. So, um, yeah, it, there is a way you can, you, you can create multiples at a, at a time. You need some more technology uh, and uh, some equipment, but it can be done. Uh, it's, um, but you're not going to be making hundreds of frames at a shot, certainly. Right. All right, you, don't, you don't mind charging 40 times what, what you would, what you're. Hell no, of course not. 
Uh, but I'll be honest with you, if I were to buy a frame for thirty dollars, I'd probably, I'd probably, and it was a decent quality frame, I'd easily charge, you know, three to four hundred dollars, depending upon what I'm looking at and how how good it is. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Kevin. So yeah, have yeah. a good walk here. Let's go hey. get a Portillo's for me. Okay. All right. We have some questions coming in. Um, someone wants to know if they can see some frames. Well, um, the video call here is not going to do your beautiful frames justice. Um, how much do you charge for custom frames? So let's get into some of the pricing model. I'm going to bring Brett Hunter on. Brett, you're coming on. Comb your hair. So there's a lot of markup in frames uh, when you're buying it um, from a, a rep. Um, there's great frame reps out there. Um, I've got a ton of education. Um, there's just, there's different models of buying frames. Okay. All right. I think we should uh, go into a little bit more into the nitty gritty, um, Perry. Yeah as far as what the parameters are, um, lead times, minimum order quantities. I think this is uh, what people would want to hear, if you agree. Go ahead. So normally, what, so what we have as Brill and I's, Brill and I's offers four different levels and tiers of private label um, to our customers. And um, one of the things when we first started, we did private label only for medium to large size chains um, because they could do the quantities. And with the development of sales and the decline of the individual offices in, in individual sales, I thought about why not bring this to the OD and optical um, practices to be able to have the same profit margin as the large chains have. And so we developed different models and um, Part of private label is branding your, your, yourself, creating your own brand, creating your own um, office brand, and also creating you stand behind in quality. What we bring to the table is our after sales service, and I think the people that have our normal product already and or our um, private label product can attest to that, that the quality is very, very high for what they're paying for the product, whether you pay it as a distribution model or you buy it as a private label um, product from us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for private label, the four tiers are, the first tier is the customer can pick out of our existing house brand collection. It's also on our website on brillanize.com. And we can, um, with a 25 piece minimum overall, the customer can order anything that is on the website on our house, under our house brand with their name on the inside of the temple. There is no price upcharge for the imprintment, but it is at regular price um, with the normal dis discount that the customer gets either through their buying group or from us uh, being a customer. <clears throat> the second tier is our house brand in larger quantities. If the customer buys a uh, 10 piece minimum per SKU, 100 piece total, meaning 10 SKUs of 10 pieces each, they can get the name of either their own brand or the name of their office, whichever one they choose on their lens, on the demo lens and on the temple. That's tier two. Tier three is choosing anything out of our existing collection that we have already launched or are in the process of launching throughout the year. Customers can reserve those, those styles for themselves at 150 piece minimum per frame, meaning it can be broken down into three colors, 50 pieces each. And this goes for all the product that we have in our existing collection. And this goes exclusively for um, metal stainless steel frames. On acetates, it depends on the style and we have to um, talk to our manufacturers. Some manufacturers are willing to do lower quantities, some aren't, depending on the overall volume of the order. Tier four is a minimum of 300 pieces per frame, 100 pieces per style per color. And in this, you can, we have our in-house designer that you can either talk to and give them the information that you would like 
as far as style input, design input, um, samples that you already like and have and have seen online or have in your stores that you would like redesigned to your liking for your demographics, we can do that as well. Um, or we can from scratch complete it completely with the brand DNA for the product. We can create a complete marketing package for you with POP, um, we give you guidance for POP with photo shoots and so on, and your own product that you can then we design for you. Our designer does that, creates prototypes for you, which is also in tier three. We always produce prototypes that the customer at the end signs off on. Um, and the quantities may sound a lot for an individual office. This is one of the reasons why we have this call. Um, you guys can either join Perry in this uh, effort in creating a line um, because Perry and, and, and uh, uh, Raymond will create their own private label line, uh, or you can create your own groups. Um, there's a customer on here right now that uh, is part of a group that they started in, uh, in Indiana with one office and uh, literally within a week, they created a group of uh, 15 offices with, I hope I'm not saying the wrong amounts, but with six different doctors. And uh, within three weeks, there was a complete collection created. Um, and yeah. hey, Eckert, I want to, there's some questions here. I want to rapid fire go through. Yep. Um, so number Question number one, someone's commenting that um, they've tried to do acetate before, but you have to buy a mass quantity. So I understand what you're saying is 300, you might have to buy 300, pairs of those glasses but if we can get 30 offices together you're willing to split it all up for us so we can still get the low cost yes yes okay. which we're doing which is really the 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 basis of private label we're doing that for our larger customers as well okay next question um someone wants to know if they can see a sample or something to see the quality before they buy um, oh yeah, you, not now, um, yeah. but yes, for sure. That's that's uh, um, my point with the prototyping. So once you once you give us the the design idea as to what you want, if it's level four, if it's something out of our own collection, um, we have the man the manufacturer will then create um, a prototype. Um, sometimes without paint, without paint and 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 coloring on it. Sometimes with to have the customer sign off on the quality, on the uh, color upbringing, on the look of the design before it goes into the final production, always. And, and we always um, insist on that with our manufacturers, but also from our customers. Okay, next question here, rapid fire. Um, someone wants to know about when there's, can you use these with insurance? I'm gonna answer that myself. Um, there's a, Insurance is confusing and the managed care plans act like you only can sell their brands that they own. That's not true. You can sell any dang frame that you want and um, full markup, mark it up 10 times, 30 times, whatever you want. No one's going to tell you what to do. Um, but Eckerd, they want to know when that insurance company that starts with a V uh, asks for the wholesale frame costs, you know, how do we, we don't want to lie. So what do we do? You tell them what you paid for the frame and you also tell them that you got this price because what we create, the majority of our private label is out of the collections that we have. So this is product that's already in the market. The only difference is it will have a private label branded name on it. So with that, um, our product normally, if you buy it, our normal distribution product runs at 99, 98.99. Um, for the majority of our uh, collections. And then our highest end is at 175, which is not in the private label range. Um, this is for distribution for here in the United States. So that is the, the list price and you are buying 300 pieces. So we do give you a discount for buying 300 pieces, which okay. the price okay. range of that product, if we're looking at the quality of an LN Max frame or a Dutz frame in this case, uh, they're made in the same um, um, in the same factories. Uh, right. You're talking about depending on 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 uh, piece count anywhere, as we discussed this many times, between um, twenty eight and thirty five to forty dollars. This All is right. this is for the quality level that we have in in that line. Okay. Next question. Um, 
Richard, they want to know if, can they put their own name on it? Perhaps it's the office name or a fun name that they made up on the inside of the temple. And can they also put that same brand on the demo lens? Well, in, in tier one, as Eckerd mentioned, um, we can put any brand that you want inside of the temple. Um, in tier two, where they're buying a minimum of 10. Hold on, let me, one sec. And not any brand, any name that the comp customer is exclusively owning right. the rights to. They have the rights. You cannot use anybody you else's put, brand name. You, yes, you can't put any yeah. brand names in there. That yeah. wouldn't be uh, the case. But in, in other words, in, in most offices, um, they come up with their own brand, um, something that sounds unique, um, you know, to put, uh, some do their doctor's office's names, but I don't think that that's something that, um, you know, that's going to help you to create a brand that, especially if you're going to do it over multiple offices that, that don't all have the same brand. But yes, that's, that's, that's easy. And yes, we can put it on both the lens and the, uh, and the temple. Okay, and next we, question. There's a lot of people that are asking, can we see the prices? You have the, the PDF and we will email that out to you. Um, don't worry, we have all the information. Um, can you give us some idea of cost per piece? You know, let's say a normal frame that you buy for $100, um, maybe a nice, it could be a nice Chinese frame or a nice um, Italian frame. What kind of would that wholesale in bulk? Uh, that, that really depends. Um, you're, you're naming two, two uh, um, very different manufacturing uh, uh, countries of origin. So um, when we have, when we're talking about very high-end Chinese product, which is usually made in the southern part of China, um, closer to Hong Kong, uh, in the acetate region, depending on the amount of styles that are ordered overall, uh, ranges anywhere between 26, 27 to 35 dollars. Um, the same goes for stainless steel, hypoallergenic stainless steel um, uh, that we would make either in China or, or the mass production that we do uh, quality wise that we see in, in, in uh, stainless steel is made in South Korea. And that is in about the same range. Okay. So can you make, um, you know, one of the hardest things for us in private practice and Dr. Brill could um, tell you about this. Don't you, sometimes we have the patients that come in and just want their insurance. Um, it happens, right, Dr. Brill? Just want what their insurance covers? Right. And we have to figure out a way to make a profit on it. We just can't sell full price product there, right? Well, I think like uh, in Europe, uh, a lot of it's in a package. And I think what we have to do is, is say, this is our standard. You know, the, in other words, so we were always going to put you in the thinnest lens with the best anti-reflective coat and something that's matched and compatible for your prescription in that frame. And we're gonna use a position of where to order it. So we, we have to have a high standard. And, and that also means that then when they go somewhere else to a big chain, uh, and they don't even wanna use a lot of times their insurance benefit anymore. They, they're, they're skeptical of the insurance benefit. They'd rather go someplace else that doesn't insure them and buy it somewhere else. So it's just crazy, but I think that uh, that's all changed in the last couple of years. People not want to use your insurance benefit. Yeah. So I think the, the benefit of doing private label is um, there's something called a wholesale frame allowance. And when you look at any of the managed care plans, that's what they're going to pay you on your frame. So when, when it says the allowance is 150, you're not getting paid 150 by that managed care provider. You're getting paid a third of that. So $50. So this private label is really perfect whether you want to do, you know, middle end, high end, or, you know, that insurance um, price point so you can really make money. Um, someone is asking, do we have to purchase a minimum of 300 frames? So uh, can, Richard, can you explain kind of what we're trying to do here by banding together as, as a group to obviously none of us can buy, need 300 of 30 models. So well, tell us what we're doing. Again, that goes back to the different tiers that we offer um, to get the best pricing, which is, I think, what you're looking to do, Perry, by forming the group. Obviously, then they have to buy 300. And the more people that you put into that group, it lowers the number of pieces that you would have to um, distribute amongst the group of people that bought it. But um, again, you know, this is something that we can send out to those that are interested, um, the actual listing of all the different tiers. And um, I know people are probably you know, crazily taking notes, but this way they'll be able to look at and understand how the pricing goes and how it changes. Obviously, as you go to 
larger quantities, um, your discount goes much higher and obviously your pricing comes down and gives you the ability to go to six, seven, eight, ten 10 times margin on your markup. So um, hope that answers that. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to come on live here and ask one of these gentlemen a question specific to your office, um, we're happy to get you on. Just let us know. Maybe Candy Moeller. She always has questions. Come on on online, Candy. Candy has no questions. Candy has no questions. Nope. Okay. Sorry. You don't have to join. Speechless. Right, <laughs> um, do you have made from wood? <laughs> I yes, we, we we can we can really supply any um, materials that the customers are looking for. It goes from Monel to titanium to stainless steel to um, wood to leather. Um, it depends on what the customers' budgets are. It depends on the demographics. Depends on what the needs are. We have customers that started with us with private label, with just in the medium uh, price range. Uh, those customers have now expanded into um, really inexpensive product for the masses, but they also have expanded into um, handmade product made in France or made in Italy um, to, to have that really great handmade product, which most of eyewear, just to eliminate all confusion, most of eyewear um, is made, whether it's made in China or whether it is made in Korea or made in Germany, Italy, or France. 90% um, of all, of all uh, um, eyewear is handmade, just so everyone knows. Okay, um, Leo, John here, um, I'm gonna, if you want to come on with your video, I'd appreciate it. Um, now, do you want to ask has had about 10 questions. So. John, you want to know um, where the frames are made and stuff? Um, it depends on what the customer wants. So, like I said, we it depends on, on the budget that the customer has. It depends, depends on the guidance the customer uh, gives us. If a customer says we want handmade in France um, and only the highest uh, uh, acetates made in France, as there are only two manufacturers left that make um, uh, acetate in France, the prices run anywhere between $50 and $75. Um, depending on volume, obviously, the more styles you buy, the the more it goes down. If you want the made in Italy and actually made in Italy, um, it's about the same price range. Uh, again, dependent on how many styles overall are being purchased, there is a plus minus of five to ten dollars depending on what you're buying. John, do you want to go ahead and ask your ask something? Well, to play off of that comment that he just made. Would you guys, as far as the group purchases, be able to split apart? Because we don't sell any frames that are made in China in our store. Uh -huh. So right. we're looking for either European or U.S. frames. So would you be able to, through the buying group, pick and choose like which frames we can label as a group and maybe have subgroups depending on where the sourcing is from? Um, you could do that, that there is a, there is a um, upcharge, but even there, there's a minimum of at least 50 pieces. So that's the, the reason of the, of the call today is to create either one group with Perry or multiple on the side. We have, like you um, as an optician or an optometrist, um, you can build your own group with friends of yours that you went to school with, etc. cetera. Um, but there will only be one uh, possible name. That's why we suggest for people not to use their own uh, office name, but to create, but to create a brand that everyone can use only within that group and have that same name. And talking about the name, one thing that I always, we always suggest to everyone, if you come up with a brand name for your own brand, go to the trademark website, the U.S. trademark website. Make sure you register your name before we create the product, um, because. If you don't and someone else has anything even remotely sounding like it in eyewear, they can shut you down in selling that product. So do your homework. Make sure you, you brand your own name. You get a trademark. If you do it through, I think, LegalZoom, it's $200 to brand your own and get your own trademark. So it's not really very costly. And it's worth the five minutes on the website to do to prevent any further cease and desist orders. Yeah, from I, I was talking about the name Iconic. Would that I beg your pardon? I'm saying about naming the frames iconic. Would that work? It okay? might be a problem. I oh, think is, there, so. is there somebody else with that name? 
Yeah. Hey, uh, um, thanks, John. Thanks for tuning Thank in. You. Appreciate it. Um, we'll get in touch about how you can team up with some other people. Um, anyways, Castro's had like 10 questions. We have some questions about warranty. So I'm going to go ahead and explain the warranty myself. So when you're buying frames, oh, did I uh, get rid of that? Uh, Richard. I got rid of Richard. <laughs> he can dial back in. He needs a bio break. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Richard, I'm get you back. Sorry. Okay. Um, Explain a warranty, Perry. All right. So the warranty is when you're buying frames in bulk, you'll do your own warranty. So you'll have maybe uh, you might have five or ten of each frame, and you'll keep maybe one or two for back stock. And when you need a temple, a right temple, just take the temple off and put it on the new frame. Uh, but perhaps one of you more experienced gentlemen, Richard or Eckerd, can explain why you can be your own warranty house, and the reason normal frame manufacturers have higher costs for frames is they have to deal with returns. Um, returns stink, don't they, Richard? Yes, they sure do. Um, sorry, I had to unmute it um, after you left me. Um, but they do. They, they cost the practice. You know, there's the, the, the whole um, issue of returning frames. If you think about it and you're in an office and you've got, say, 10 uh, sales reps that you buy from on a regular basis. They come three times a year. Um, each time they come, they come in and they, uh, you know, have picked five or 10 frames to send back. Um, so now it takes your optician um, the time to, you know, not only wrap up all those frames, take them out of the system, the cost to send them back. Um, and, you know, a lot of the larger companies ding you for every frame that comes back, they charge you a restocking fee or this or that. So if you look at it, by the end of the year and how much money you've spent in returning frames, um, for many offices, if they knew that actual cost, if the doctor knew that actual cost, um, they would probably have a heart attack. So um, this way, um, you know, when you produce the product of your own, you're picking styles that you know you're going to sell. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it makes it that much better for you because even if something doesn't sell, what you paid for it, you put it on your, you know, your last look board or one of your sales boards when it gets to that that time and, and you move it out that way. Um, and as far as the warranty goes, you, you cover your own warranty. Um, with the lower costs of frames like that, you know, we tend to, to offer if you're picking 100 frames, take a couple of those, put them, uh, put them in your drawer and hold those on your warranty. I don't know, Becker, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, the, so basically, not only can you create your own warranty, you can create your own uh, policies, um, whether you have a refit policy, which some offices still have, um, where they offer a refit and uh, then would like to take the frame back within 30 days, 60 days, some go as far as 90 days. You can do that. This is your policy now, and you are responsible for that. So that means if you are part of the group and you're purchasing 30 of those 100 per color or 20 of those 100, take one or two that you keep as back stock for defective replacements and or um, for warranty issues or refits. And depending on what your policies are, you can create them. You can create your warranty. Um, our average warranty um, in the United States with our branded product is at 0.71% or actually 0.7%. Um, and with larger customers, depending on how much they purchase from us, uh, it goes up to about 1.5 to 2% company, uh, uh, sorry, industry average lies somewhere between 7 and 15% uh, in defective return. The product that we produce, um, we use in metal, for instance, only stainless steel that is hypoallergenic from Germany. We source all of our raw materials, including the stainless steel, including the acetates, the screws, the hinges, anything that we use, we make sure that the factory gets what we bought and send to them. Um, we have quality control in the factories, whether it is in Vietnam, whether it is in China, whether it is in Germany, whether it is in, in France or in Italy, and wherever else we manufacture. So um, we, have a, we, have a, we have a poll have going a, right now, and I um, hope, hope all you can fill it out. So the poll number one is, have we convinced you? Do you want to design your own line and make real profits? Um, it's three simple answers. It's yes, no, or, or seems too complicated. Um, so it's, I just want to say it's not complicated. I'm going to put it in my own, own, own terms. What you do is you'll contact uh, these two gentlemen here. 
Um, they can come out to your practice or you can go to the, their headquarters. You're in LA, right? We're in Orange County, south of LA. We're right in the middle between LA and uh, San Diego. Next door to us, um, we work very closely. Um, we have our own uh, design studio and, and um, product development center uh, closely with our partners at iPorters. Okay, so the way I understand is you'll treat us like we're five years old. You'll walk us through every step, teach us how to drive. We don't, I don't need to know how to do a sketchbook or do CAD, right? No, you don't need to do any of that. Um, you can bring us um, either if you want uh, uh, ideas out of magazines, color swatches that you want to use, ideas. Uh, we have our designer that can create anything for you. You don't have to draw anything for us. You could show us samples that you would like uh, something to be in that direction and we can create it based on that. Whichever you prefer, we can create for you. And as you said, we don't treat anyone like a five-year-old. We treat everyone like adults here. Um, and we also provide adult beverages during the, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, pr during the design and production time. Um, but we really, we really make sure that everyone is taken care of. And like I said, everything goes in steps. It goes from the conceptualization that you will be part of um, to the design, the first drawings. And I don't know, Perry, if you have a few of the drawings that I sent you prior to from our designer. So it goes really from a hand sketch to the actual um, um, technical drawing that we create. From there goes into, pro um, into prototyping and prototype production, and then the sign off by whoever is the decision maker in the group to say, okay, yes, the product looks right, the design is right, the colors look right, let's go. And That's from that day month. on, depending on what it is that we are producing for you, lead times we haven't mentioned yet, uh, the lead times are anywhere between 100 to 180 days, depending on what you would like. Um, in times of COVID-19, some of the uh, customers that have purchased before, um, it has been a little delayed. Um, one of our customers um, is already talking here to a few of you guys um, separately. And, um, but normally it's 100 to 180 days, depending on where it's produced. The only larger variable is if we are producing handmade in Italy, there are a little bit more variables in, in delivery times that we have no influence. It could be four months, it could be eight months. Dr. Brill, go ahead and share us the poll results. It looks like um, over 60% of people say, um, sign me up. So you wanna share those? Yeah, let me pull it up here, uh, polls, there we go. Okay, so it looks like, have we convinced you? Um, about 79%, so maybe that follows the 80-20 rule, doesn't it? So I think that we might have something here. Um, and it's helpful for us to have experts in this industry. We, we optometrists, we're not experts at this. So uh, this is something that we need help with. And I, I thought it'd be nice to, I don't know any of his customers, but I saw there was one gentleman, Kent Godfrey, and I think he's a customer. He and is, yes, he has yeah. multiple lines from us and we're in the, in the middle of producing three more. Okay, you, I don't know if you want to put him on or not. I, I don't want to make it seem sure, like a show. Really maybe like. people can ask him a question. Okay. Please. So, and was there somebody else on there that seemed like, um, I don't know, what was it? Uh, let's see. Here, Kent, Kent, if you can hear us, hop on the line here. Um, so I just want to say the purpose of buying frames inexpensive high is that you have markup. You can mark them up 8, 10, 15. Don't, don't be afraid. No, well, the, purpose really, the purpose really is, if you think about it, you're buying a product that you normally pay $100 for. And that product you normally mark up up to three, some three and a half times. So you get the same quality product that you normally pay $100 for roughly at let's say in a 30 to $35 price range or $25 price range, depending on what your, uh, uh, on how many orders and, and, and styles you do in this group. Um, and with that, with that said, your price ranges and you can, you're not buying a $30 product that you normally buy as a distribution product. And hello, Kent. So hey. maybe you can speak better. Yeah. No, you're doing great. Okay. Tell us, are you an optometrist, optician? Who are you? I'm an optometrist. I'm a CEO trapped in an optometrist body. What is it called? I'm an, op I'm a CEO, an entrepreneur trapped in an optometrist body. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And where are you in it? You're, are you the one he was talking about in Indiana? No, I'm in Denver. Denver. Okay. So Tell us about your experience. your experience. How did you link up? 
Um, a friend of mine connected Eckert and I, so that's where that started. And then we took it and ran and created our third and fourth and fifth line. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Ken yeah. is a regular in our, in our design studio now. He, uh, what, one thing that I really admire about what Kent has done in the past is he brings his lead opticians, they, they, they bring their input, they, they tell us exactly what they're needing in the different offices and with them together, um, which I loved that Kent didn't assume that he uh, um, ate the wisdom of Iver with a gigantic ladle. He included his, his uh, main team and uh, I, they have done a really, really good job. Yeah, how many locations have you got? Four now. Okay, and you were able to achieve these quantities or did you, did you do group purchasing with somebody else? No. You can achieve the quantities that you need with four or five and you don't need a whole bunch. And if you are, want to do something local for your state or your group, you can do it. It's, it takes time. It takes energy. It takes some money and it, it takes a change in your mindset. You cannot be buying frames the same way that you thought you would. This is just like if you walked into a Macy's or Dillard's or a Costco, they all have their private label branded stuff that we're paying full price for when we go in there. And that's exactly what we decided to do and get rid of a lot of the branded label product in our office and we will be completely independent frame line our own frame line by the end of probably 2021 if all goes well wow and and uh, how many uh what was your investment like it depends on the number of frames you want to go either you go big or go home and we we're going to share this with some of the people here in colorado we've branded we've um got our own frame line for the state of colorado and we've got our colorado frame line but we also have um, one that we share across the country with five or six other doctors. And so if you have friends, you can do this together. You just have to trust the person that's doing it. Right. And how did you I know what styles we, would sell? How did you know? What, did you say, hey, can you knock off uh, Barton Ferrero number this or a... No, we don't do any knockoffs. We just, we just go by styling and designs okay. in, in the right similar. direction. How did you do that, Kent? How did you decide what would be your best sellers and, and not be a dog? So trust your opticians. You've got people that know styles. Call up Eckert, fly out there, spend the money, invest in your practice, and they will help you. We brought stuff we knew. We brought frame styles we know. You could do a Wayfarer if you want to. You can copy the style. Yeah, take your best sellers. You, your make, opticians know what sells. As doctors, get out of your opticians way and let them run your business and help them make your money. Okay, Kent, we're going to dub you a wizard. You are a wizard. You are not a wizard. No. With all the rights and privileges that it comes to, comes with. So someone's asking, can you redesign uh, some of your best sellers? So yeah, you know, if you love a certain P3, you can create something similar. I think we have a P3 coming, don't we, Eckert? Yes, you do. You actually have three coming. Um, I think this release that you just did has 38 styles that you did, I believe, right? Um, yes. uh, in, in 300 uh, pieces per style. Um, and the, the idea that Kent had was really amazing um, with creating something for his own state. And the buzz that he's created and the amount of frames that he's sold, I think in the first, you could share it if you want, but um, it, it were hundreds of frames in the first month alone. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's impressive. It really is impressive. And he's, he's um, yeah, he's been doing really well with the product. Thank you for coming on. I didn't even know you were going to be here, but thank you. So what do you mean for your own state? Did you sell to other Colorado doctors or is it? This Colorado next line we're, this line we're doing is I'm going to, I'm tired of the Luxoticas, the, Saffalos, the Marchands, the VSPs taking my money. So I decided to do something about it. There you go. And either you're going to keep giving VSP your money by buying Marchand frames, you're going to give Luxotic your money or, and run yourself out of business, or you're going to stay in business. I didn't have to take the PPP loan because I've got private label frames that are helping me out. 
Perfect. There's, there's, there's another customer on here um, that uh, it's a, it's a group um, out of a Midwest state. I don't want to say the name right now. And uh, they have pretty much two weeks before the shutdown here in California, they came out um, the, the, their product team and they finalized everything with us. Um, the, I think the total SKUs are 120 or 130 SKUs that they're doing. Um, and uh, have also forecasted for later in the year uh, in the year for the next release and their main thing was really it was for one it was great timing that they did this but now with with what's going on in, in the in the world with covid-19 and, and the coronavirus um, one of their one of their main things were with the people in charge uh, they said, you know this is one of our best way of um, recovering some of the, the losses that we have incurred over the last couple of weeks. And we're, we can't be more excited to do so. And it's, you know, outside of the COVID-19 part, as Ken said, the, the margins are there, you get fantastic quality product, um, and it is your own handwriting. And uh, uh, just, to, just to clarify that again, so when, when somebody comes to us and has design ideas, we always give it our touch. And we always create product that is unique for this office and for the doctor or for the for the customer themselves um, to make sure that they get something that isn't shoppable, even in look. Um, even for Kent right now, uh, the next project in the making is a, um, a sunglass line. Some of you had asked about sunglasses. Um, we're, we're creating a sunglass line for a friend of his um, in the Caribbean for a restaurant. It's only two or three styles, but it's the same style in different sizes. So everything is possible. Sunglasses, we do readers, we do reader sunglasses, we do blister packaging, um, anything that you want, depending on the size of your office or your group. Like I said, we have groups that are as small as, as, as four offices, or three offices, even smaller than um, uh, what we just heard, up to a thousand offices or 980 offices. So there's really a little bit of everything. And, and I think that differentiates us from the majority out there. And the other part that we've been growing over the last two years is designing and creating designs and new collections for other eyewear companies. So if there are other eyewear companies out there, we do that as well for you because everything is designed in-house. Perry, Raymond? Yes. Uh, Perry, I think there's some people on that haven't been called on. And we've asked a lot of questions. So. Oh, okay. Here. Yes, I, my computer is making noises. Sorry. Okay. Um, let me take uh, a look. Here. And yes, you can design your own frames. Just to ask, to answer Kevin uh, Kretsch's question, you can bring your own designs as well, and we can then put it in an actual drawing the way that it should be with measurements according to what you tell us. Okay. Uh, are there are there copyrights or patents on styles or frames there, Eckert? Because there was a question. Right. Are there patents on styles of frames? So there, there are patents on, on, on certain styling, not so much patent, more on technology, on uh, mountings, on uh, uh, certain, certain combinations of materials, and so on and so on. Um, there's a degree of intellectual property, um, which I really can't give you the degree of how far that goes. Um, that's one of the reasons why we always redesign everything and never, ever, uh, take anything as is. Okay, so when when you said copy or somebody said maybe like emulate, uh, no one's out there to break a law. I'm sorry? When when we said copy a frame or maybe simulate a frame, no one's out there to break any laws. There was a comment of uh, Raymond Castro that, you know, we're, we're going to do things illegally. So can you comment on that? No, we don't do anything illegal um, ever because they're, they're, as far as designs go, the designs that we create are ours. And it depends on what we do. If we, the majority of our customers that do private label buy the existing designs of our collection, um, with that, we own the rights to those anyway. Um, we created them and we can sell them to whom we uh, choose to sell them to. Um, that's number one. If you want us to create your own line, we usually go with the direction of the customer, but we, you can't come to us and give us a collection of a, of a competitor and say, copy this. We don't do that. If that's the question. Yeah, that was the question. I think there were, we maybe were sloppy with our words on that. So, 
Um, tell, tell us, tell us about the different acetates out there. I know there's Japanese acetate, Chinese acetate, Italian acetate. We can choose, right? Um, yes. Well, there's 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 a whole different um, array and and a whole huge array of different um, acetate manufacturers. Um, nowadays, about 95% of all acetate, or I would say 93% of all acetate is manufactured, and I'm just talking about the material itself is manufactured in China. Um, and the, there's still acetate manufactured in Italy, there's still um, acetate manufactured in, in uh, Japan. Japan has beautiful, beautiful acetates. Um, they're some of the most expensive acetates that you can purchase. Actually, some of the product that uh, Kent uh, is is uh, ordering from us is actually made in in Japanese acetates, and so it, it depends on where you would like to buy it. There's also quantities that we have to purchase from the acetate manufacturer. Um, someone's typing in the background there. I think and the microphone is really really loud, um, and so the. We have, like I said, you can buy acetates from uh, Matsukeli, from Laes, uh, in, in Italy. Some of it is made in, some of it is made in their facilities, Matsukeli's or Laes in in uh, in China, which is it's not a secret. Um, the majority, the masses are produced, at least the raw materials for that are produced in China. Even if you have that product then made elsewhere, that's it, the raw materials in acetate. Most of it comes from China. And that is secret. Everyone knows that that's an eyewear. Um, that's pretty much, I think, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that answers it. Um, I know there's, I would like to say that, you know, a Chinese frame can be just as good quality as an Italian frame or, or French. It's really who's making the frame. Would you say that's accurate? Yes, it depends on how much you would like to invest. Um, and that doesn't matter if you make it in China or you make it uh, uh, in, in Japan or in Italy or in France or in Germany. It, it all depends. There's high end quality coming out of China, um, very good quality. Um, there is very, very good quality um, coming out of uh, Japan and also coming out of Korea, but also Germany, Italy, and, and France. It really depends on what your focus is, what you would like to create. So, for instance, if you create something in, in made in France or made in Italy, sometimes the MOQs or the minimum order quantities go below the 300, but your purchasing price goes up. Um, so we can negotiate with those manufacturers, and if they want to, if they want to take the order, um, then they say, okay, yes, we may be able to do 250 or 200 pieces per style, and 210, so you have 70 per color. But then your average price goes maybe from thirty dollars to seventy. Um, so it, it it really depends on what it is and what you achieve. Really is possible. Whether it's materials we can get pretty much any material. I would like some are harder um, and difficult to work with. Um, but really, you have time and um, you have as what you are actually looking for. I'm sorry. Sorry, we missed a lot of that. That was with uh, your audio was off there or bad audio. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, what I was saying is that the quality um, depends on and the, the, the amount of uh, um, you want to pay or need to pay for a product. It depends on what you're looking for and what you need. Um, so you can, um, in acetates, like I said, as most of the acetates nowadays, the, the raw materials are produced in China um, and sent around to their facilities to produce the product. Someone wants to know about country of origin on the frame. You know, does it have to be stamped where it's made? Um, what are the legalities about that, the morals, ethics? So we, we typically, um, on, on all the, the product that you order with private label from us, we put the country of origin on there. Um, we are an FDA approved um, importer for eyewear, uh, for medical devices and for eyewear. And so we also share the, the country of origin. And I think Kent can, can talk to this as well if he likes. Uh, but generally, we share the, the country of origin with everyone. Everyone knows what they're getting. There's no uh, ifs or buts. And we do not do false imprintment. Because other companies, I do not choose to be part of that. Um, 
for an order of, from someone that thinks they would like to cheat the system. I don't name trades for that, call me back, whatever you like, but I think um, the reality of their product is from and where it's made. Yeah. Hey, um, Richard, someone wants to know, can, can they make kids frames? A nice little children's line. Rick, you're muted. You're muted. There we go. Well, I wasn't muted. Hey, go oh. ahead. Okay. So uh, like I could said, we can make anything. Um, anything that, that, that you're looking to do, we can find a source to manufacture it through one of our partners. Um, I just saw that Darlene, I think it was, that made a comment about, um, yeah, it's going to be produced, all the parts are going to come from China, but produced in whatever country. That's not the case. And as Eckerd mentioned earlier, um, we do source all of our own materials. Um, again, with acetate, yeah, 90 whatever percent of it is going to come from China. And that's not something that we can really control because that's where it's made. But if you look at the other parts, whether it's stainless steel, uh, hinges, whatever, um, we buy them from the companies that we know are quality. And, and the stainless steel we use is all German stainless steel. And uh, the quality of the product, like Eckert said, our, our uh, return rate is, is, is so low that um, most of our customers can attest to it. And then I'm sure if, uh, if we get um, Kent back on here, he can explain to you as well. That's probably one of the main reasons that he went with us because really they just don't see the product coming back. So people are, a lot of people are asking, um, you know, if they want more information, what, what should they do, gentlemen? Personally, once you exit out of this, this um, webinar, you're going to get a survey that pops up. Uh, it's a great place for people that do, um, like Dr. Brill and I, we have, we have one office. Um, so we, we can't buy uh, a ton, a ton of frames. We, we're frame addicts, but we would love to partner with a lot of you. Um, but how can they get in touch with you? Um, I am just sharing my email here. Um, if anybody would like to uh, um, contact us or me directly, here's my email. Um, we can give you more information. We can give you detailed information depending on your, um, your needs, depending on your plans, on your ideas. Um, we just also, right before the, the coronavirus hit, had a, a publication in, in uh, I Care Business about the private label um, with the introduction of our design studio next door. We used to do it all in one house right here. We just expanded um, in, to another building next door. And um, so really anything that you have questions, there is no question um, that we don't answer and there's no, no frivolous We really have house questions, curiosity about. Here we are. I should think about wrapping up here. We're going on about an hour and a half. So. Okay. Yeah. So um, first off, I want to thank everybody, all 108 that are still on here. Um, I can tell all of you have just as much passion as all four of us on here. Um, frames are, are some of the best, um, some of the best things out there and with trade shows potentially not existing for the next year. Um, it's important that we do find alternative sources and ones that can make us profit um, and ones that we can be proud to share with our local communities. I know buying local is going to be uh, a major thing right now, um, whether you're buying beer, uh, tomatoes, or um, mask, I think we need to buy it local. Do you agree, gentlemen? Absolutely. Thank you. I agree. I think in this in this day and age, a lot of things will change, especially when it comes to food, food consumption, what we consume, how much of it we consume, and uh, how close to home we can actually um, get the product to prevent long travel, long production lines, uh, uncontrollable production, um, and make all of us healthy. At least this is what I will do. I will definitely change my approach to many things. And I think there will be also a silver lining at the end of this, for sure. Yeah, um, Raymond, your comment about insurance, uh, we'll have to talk offline, but you can, you can choose any frame on insurance. You just need to read your contract really carefully. Uh, they have lawyers write that to scare you. So I, I'd happy to analyze your insurance uh, back ends with you. It is fine to use any type of frame on insurance. You just can't use, um, you know, there used to be a company with VSP, I'm not gonna say the name, but they were in a legal lawsuit over like a hinge. And I think a lot of you know what we're talking about. Um, so anyways, gentlemen, final words, Richard. Um, what can we look forward to in eye care and optical? 
Well, I just want to thank everyone who's joined us today. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you in regards to questions uh, about private label and, and how to get started. And I think that uh, you'll find that it's a lot easier than maybe you thought it was. And hopefully we dispelled some of the rumors that, uh, that you had or have heard about doing private label. Um, and, and thanks Kent for coming on and kind of giving us a little feedback to somebody that has worked with us and understands the process. So, um, you know, good things to come. And, and once um, this new normal uh, is here, I, I think that uh, we're all gonna be looking for ways to increase that profitability. So give us a call, look at, or, or go and look at us at uh, uh, brillanize.com. And uh, again, thanks for coming. One thing that one last thought that I would like two thoughts that I'd like to ask uh, and to add here is uh, part of private label, what it does to your practice, to your optical shop, uh, to your ophthalmology, whichever way you're going, is it, it opens up um, marketing op marketing opportunities um, that you just don't have when you buy at a different price point. And part of that is packaging, packaging sales. Um, one of the reasons why online sales have skyrocketed, and this is a survey that we did in, in Europe um, last year and the year before, is price transparency when people go to an online um, a retailer for eyewear. They know they're paying $150 for this package, $500, $1,000. There's packages up to $6,000 for eyewear. So it isn't just the 99 or the $9.99 uh, online uh, marketer. So um, with this with this said, that means in Europe, for instance, over the last three to five years, almost 90% of every optical shop sells everything in package pricing for exactly that reason. Because online, the people go online, not necessarily because it's more convenient, but really because the price transparency is there that they feel they don't get when they go into the traditional optical shop, optometry office or ophthalmology. They never really know what they're walking out with. When you present packages on the wall, you eliminate that. Keep the lines together, whatever, whether it's private label or it's a branded product, when you buy a brand or a line, whether it's your own or from someone else in distribution, do not separate them by gender. Do not have a men's and a women's uh, board anymore because in, in these days, people go across different gender ideas and gender looks. You can keep them together. No one has to decide, is this a men's frame or a woman's frame? If it is a unisex, even better keep them together by line. It also makes it look better on your board. You just generally show more product on the board, which is good for the patient for their comfort level. Um, other than that, I'd like to thank uh, Perry and Raymond to give us the, this portal to get our message out there. Um, you will probably hear a lot more of us uh, in the future, hopefully, and even more so, I would wish to hear from you guys. Uh, we're here, um, we're working, we're, um, every day designing and creating. So none of that has changed. Although most of our um, people here in the office are working from home, but the good thing is in designing, everything's possible. And we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Well, this has been really exciting. Uh, I, like I said, I've been wanting to do this for about 30 years. And I know we're gonna have skeptics. They're gonna be like, there's something wrong with it. Or there's a catch or, and I'm not, you know, I find somebody, but I find someone else that'll sell them for 30 frames at a time. I mean, you're going to find all that, but, uh, and you're welcome to go do it however you want, but this is an opportunity. And I've listened to all these COVID presentations. They all sound the same. Everybody says what everybody else says. I'm going to have them outside and I'll have them call in. Then we'll tell them to come in. Like, okay, you save two minutes by putting them in the car. I'm thinking if I'm the consumer, I hate that. Okay. I want to be treated like a human being. And once it's all safe, uh, so no new ideas, but and this is a, a group purchasing, unlike something you would get from an alliance group or a buying group. Because when buying groups started in the 80s, uh, the first thing that happened, all the prices went up. And if you weren't on a buying group, you got, you got punished. So to answer uh, about the wholesale, wholesale frame cost, I think we have to think a little differently. We, we are actually, when we're buying uh, and designing frames, we're actually the wholesaler. So think of yourself as the wholesaler and you could charge whatever uh, whatever retail price or whatever actual wholesale price you want. You're, uh, I don't know what you would call a, a pre-wholesaler, but you were man essentially a manufacturer when we're having our phone frames manufactured for us. 
and then we can do the wholesale price or whatever whatever you want. You're becoming the captain of your own ship. Yeah, right. we're, we're cutting out the greedy middleman as one of the uh, retailers have a cartoon about. We're, we're no longer dealing with the greedy middlemen and women. I want to leave the women in there too. So, um, so we can have a little bit more control and I've been accused of being a control freak, but this is nice when you have the control when you can be generous with some with a consumer because you actually have a little bit of margin. They broke it, you know, they they rolled over it with the truck, but you can say, hey, that's not a problem. I'll take care of you. So, second, especially on second pair discounts, I know optometry and optical, we love to give away the profits. Um, but when you can actually give a legitimate discount when you're buying frames at um, lower prices. Well, yeah, anyways, second pair, if you say, I want to give you 50% off, well, you didn't, just didn't make any money at all. Yeah. So uh, I know people. Well, the whole, the whole purpose of us being here, we want you to have careers and not day jobs. So with that being said, I, I invite you to all and join our group, um, Entrepreneur Facebook group, where we'll continue a lot of these conversations. Uh, it's a group of almost 1,400 1, people where we have intellectual conversations about everything in eye care and optical. Um, not many cat videos, sorry. But um, hope you can join us uh, and check out our podcast and other educational videos. And if you have friends or you want to review this, send it to your boss, coworkers, mother, grandpa. We will re-air this. Um, you can send an email to me. I'll put it in here. Reach out to me. I'll send you the, the YouTube link when I get this edited tomorrow. And with that being said... Hope everyone has a great evening. So, bye everyone. Stay safe. Wash your hands.